Hello, NASDAQ followers, and welcome to another episode of Trade Talks. I'm your host, Leanne Alfaro, and joining me today are the managing partners of Harlem, Harlem, um, excuse me, Harlem Capital, Jared Tingle, as well as Henri Jacques Pierre. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. So you guys had just had some major news, closing a 40 million um, and debuting with a venture capital fund with a big mission to fund 1,000 diverse founders in the next 20 years. So that you guys are still on track, it sounds like, and going strong. We are, just getting started. So talk to us a little bit about um, how this got started and the trajectory that's gotten you here so far. Yes, I mean, the founding story, we started December 2015 uh, in Jared's living room, actually in Harlem as an angel syndicate. So we were investing our own personal capital uh, across different startups. I think eventually we realized that most of our portfolio was diverse, even though that wasn't our thesis at the time. And we also realized that there was a lack of diverse founders. Our hypothesis was there was probably a lack of diverse investors. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we said, hey, why don't we focus our syndicate on investing in people of color and women? Uh, fast forward two years, Jerry and I go to Harvard Business School. We were roommates. Uh, once we were in business school, we felt like we had built a pretty good track record, identified a market opportunity, and had built a brand in the market. Uh, and so decided, why don't we fundraise between our first and second year of business school instead of interning? And we launched a fund uh, June of 2018 and just closed last week. Incredible. Congratulations. Thank you. So as you guys mentioned, you just graduated from Harvard. So you guys have gone full momentum into this goal of funding diverse founders. So how, talk to us a little bit about your portfolio so far. How do you choose what companies to invest in? Some of the people in your portfolio, some of the companies include Shine, which we're very familiar here with, here at NASDAQ, and Blavity, which focuses on black news and creatives. Uh, who else makes your portfolio? Yeah, so as a fund, we're focused on investing in women and minorities uh, of color. And so that's kind of the first thing. We're focused on the U.S., seed and Series A. Typically for us, our check size is a half a million, $10 million, uh, so we can lead a lot of the seed rounds and then co-invest in the Series A. So our current portfolio, we have eight investments in the fund. Uh, Blavity was actually in our pre-fund, so we made six investments as angel investors. Um, from the fund, the eight companies were all across the U.S., so we've invested across both our portfolios in nine cities across nine industries, so we're pretty, pretty agnostic. Uh, Shine was one of our most recent uh, investments, which is a wellness app uh, based here uh, in New York. Naomi and Mara, who are two women founders, we're super excited for that. Uh, Wagmo, which is a pet wellness platform run by Christy Horvath, a woman founder actually graduated HBS the year before us. We just announced today uh, we led the follow on to the, the seed round, $3 million. So we're super excited and think that the pet industry is really booming and underpenetrated in the U.S. Um, we're continuing to invest in more founders. Uh, we're going to close two more deals before the end of the year and super excited. We're excited for you. So there's a lot of room for growth here, right? I mean, when you look at, and this is something that you report on, not only do you invest in minority and women founders, but you also report on the VC space. Um, you cited a report by Richard Kirby that says that minority uh, kind of investors are rare in this space, but also when it comes to funding, I think it was something like 3% of the funding goes to uh, black and minority founders. So talk to us a little bit about how we close that gap and what role you play in it. Yeah, so the stats are pretty dire. There was $130 billion invested in the VC in 2018, and only about 3%, we estimate, landed into exclusively women or people of color founded companies. So very dire. If you look at female founders and you have maybe one female on a team, that number gets to more like 15% of VC funding, but it's still very, very dire. So from our perspective, there's really, there needs to be a lot of change in this industry. And the reason I think, backtracking a little bit on why this problem exists is because there's very few people of color and women in the investor seat for VC funds. And given that VC is subjective, where ultimately, even if you do have market expertise, you still ultimately are assessing people. You're assessing their passion, their commitment, their competence and their vision for the future. And you're just better able to do that if you have a diverse set of people around the table. Another thing that happens in VC is that there's power law dynamics at play where a few winners really generate all your returns. And so if historically only white males were given capital, given the ability to fail, given the ability to grow their business and given a chance and the runway to exit, then those are gonna be who IPOs and who makes the big exits. And VCs continue to pattern match for them but if minorities have never been given a chance, they'll never have the opportunity. So we think it all starts with the investors. You need more diverse investors at the table. So we think that 
although VC funds are making strides, they're hiring more women and people of color partners, that's great. Great ultimately, but you really do need diverse focused funds like ourselves to actually expedite this process and get this industry closer to the parity. So now, as mentioned earlier, I mean, you guys have also reported on other VCs in the space that are targeting just this issue and trying to get more diverse investors in this space. So talk to us a little bit about the findings from that report and what it kind of focused on. Yeah, so the Power 200 report uh, was a report we found 200 black and Latino uh, investors in venture capital uh, across 161 funds. I think some of the key things for us was there was only four funds, including us, that had four or more black Latino investors. There were 25 funds that had two or more black Latino investors, the top who, 20. Who were those four funds? I just like uh, to call them out yeah, by name. So us, Google Ventures, Kapoor Capital, and Backstage Capital mm -hmm. were the four. The top 20 funds represent 25% of all black Latino investors across the entire US. And so you see really big concentration. Another thing that we found was 50% of the VC investors who are black Latino were partners. Um, and so similar to us, we kind of bought our way into venture capital, right? Neither, neither one of us worked in VC. We angel invested and eventually we started a fund. And so I think it's a really big challenge when a lot of people of color aren't able to actually get into venture. And it's usually 30 to 40 year old uh, GPs who are starting their own micro funds similar to ours to get into the space. Another big thing that stood out was 50% um, of the investors had MBAs and 40% of the MBAs went to Harvard or Stanford, which is true across the VC industry as a whole. Uh, and so a lot of people, you don't need an MBA, um, but it is something that does help if you want to get to the partner level. And we did the report really for two reasons. One, we wanted VC investors of color to be able to find each other. So 40% of VC investors of color aren't in New York or San Francisco, and it's really hard to connect. And then two, if you're a founder of color, oftentimes we know how hard it is to get capital. If we can recognize who are the firms that have diverse investors, you probably have a higher likelihood of getting capital from them. So we wanted to acknowledge here are the VC funds that have at least spent money to hire somebody of color. They may be more likely to invest as you in a person of color. You should go reach out to these firms at a start. And I'm sure that's very useful to be able to connect all those dots right across this space. It seems like it's a very small space, especially for mm -hmm. diverse uh, pe people and minorities in, in the VC world. So when you are hearing from these different companies and considering who to add to your portfolio, what really makes a winning pitch or a company for you? So VCs tend to focus on three things and like other VCs, we're, we're focusing them too. Team, market, product. From the team side, we like to see an experienced team, or at least a team that has relevant experience and is very passionate about the problem. In VC and in the startup world, you need to be motivated by way more than money to get through all the highs and lows and the emotional turmoil that kind of comes with running a company. So we need to see some deep-seated reason why them. And it helps when they also have other people on their team who support them and are mission aligned. Second, on the market, we look for big markets, billion dollar plus markets. You can't outgrow your market, so we at least want to make sure there's enough kind of market share to grab. And if you are creating a new market, then maybe we will consider it a bit differently. And we want to see a growing market there. Um, and then lastly, on the product side, it's really important that you have a differentiated product. So what makes you different than a competition? What makes you unique? How are you going to appeal to different customers? How are you going to do better? How are you going to build a better mousetrap? And how are you going to have a sustained advantage with barriers to entry that you can maintain over a long period of time? And that'll make us ultimately feel more comfortable in investing in these founders. And I mean, in the coming year, just coming off this big news, what are you most excited for personally or for? Yeah, um, we have our 2020 strategy meeting next week on Monday okay. and Tuesday. So we're already thinking about how do we want to prepare for next year. I mean, we want to definitely deploy capital. I think we're really excited to be able to lead deals and write bigger checks and do bigger follow-ons. Um, and we really are just thinking about how do we continue to help the ecosystem. So we want to make more research reports. So we have a few more coming out next year. Uh, we're, we're going to have 200 black Latino uh, founders who've raised a million dollars. We're going to do a pre-seed report. Where we're going to show people, hey, we can't do pre-seed anymore because we're a $40 million fund, but here are the other funds that exist in the market that can help you earlier stage. So we just want to continue to develop the ecosystem. I think we're really excited to be done with fundraising and just focus on the business because uh, as you know fundraising is a full-time job I think that's really that, that's what it's like to me personally yeah I'm excited to just focus more on investing we spent a lot of time energy fundraising so it'll be great to just spend more time with founders really give people more attention we also bring it on two senior associates on our team one already started part-time one will start part-time in Q1 so great to have more people on our team that are really hungry for the mission one's in business school at Yale one's in business school at Ross Michigan they're both great women that we're excited to have on and then also we're excited to really expand our physical presence. Because we've been doing this part-time, we've been in Boston or wherever, it's been tough for us to actually host our own events. 
So I think having eight to 10 events in New York City in 2020 could be really meaningful for us and help us build and continue to retain our competitive moat. Absolutely. Well, Jared and Henry, so congratulations. So excited to have you here in the studio and really glad to see also that the team reflects, right, these changes that you want to see in the industry. And we hope to have you back here soon. Thanks. Great. Thank you. Appreciate it. NASDAQ followers, please stay tuned for more coverage coming to you right here from the NASDAQ market site. Until then, this is Leanne signing off right here from Trade Talks.